Good morning, friends. It's Monday morning, uh, July 19th, and we are on mile 16. Read 2 Timothy 2. It says, reread verse 5. The next time you participate in or watch a sporting event, compare the value of God's victor's crown to earthly achievements. So that's going to be a fun one. Friends, first, let's pray together. Hey Lord, we thank you for this time to gather together, to dive into your word, to better know you, Lord, to know you more, as we've been singing every week. That is our goal. That is our objective. Lord, as we examine these writings of Paul to Timothy, Lord, let our time be blessed. Let us gain some insight and some knowledge into something that we didn't know, Lord. Give us give us the knowledge beyond our comprehension as we study these holy inspired words. In Jesus' name, amen. So 2 Timothy 2 um, starts out, right, with Jesus once again addressing Timothy, right? Then you, my child, be strong in grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me through the, through the witnesses and trusted to faithful people who will be able to teach others as well. And then he goes on. Um, but I, verse 5, right, is what they, what they had us focus on. That's what our statement or question for this for today is. And it says, and in the case of an athlete, no one is crowned without competing according to the rules. It is the farmer who does the work who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in all things. To friends, right? This is fun, right? The case of the athlete, no one is crowned without competing according to the rules, right? We have to follow the rules, right? God gives us law, gives us rules um, that we have to compete, that we have to stay um, within the realms of, you know? Um, just, what, maybe two weeks ago now, the uh, the Olympic athlete, I believe she was a track runner, that, um, that used... Um, that used marijuana, right? That fell outside the realms of of what the rules were, and now she doesn't get to compete because she didn't follow the rules, right? Um, there, we have rules that we have to follow, right? Whether it's traffic, you know, traffic laws. We got to stop at a stoplight. You know, we don't, we can't turn. Um, turn right on red if there's a sign that says no turn on red right um all these kind of rules that we have to follow in life right rules that are established you know that i think of in my house right i have rules that that heather and i have established for our children right that they have to follow um they don't have a choice in that <laughs> right um they're not going to win they're not going to win their game right and what is their game that they're playing now their game is to be uh, to, to be children and to and to grow up you know as godly young men and women that's that's their game that's the game that they're playing now and if they don't follow our rules well that's not honoring and pleasing to God so they're never going to win that competition are they and of course you know we can go into the whole thing of how those kind of things build character um, and, you know, and we'll help them out better in the future uh, in their workplace and following rules and things like that but I think we all kind of understand those things, right? So no one is crowned without competing according to the rules. It's easy to get disqualified, right? If we don't follow the rules, we're disqualified. We're out of bounds. Now, and then uh, the, the verse 6, right? It is the farmer who does the work who ought to have the first share of the crops. You put in the work, you get the reward. Right, um, you know, we we can go back to the Old Testament. I uh, forget exactly where the reference is. You know, with the reference to reaping and sowing, right? Whatever, whatever you plant, whatever you plant, is what you will harvest. Right? If you if you plant zucchini, you're not going to harvest tomatoes. That's just the way it is, right? You reap what you sow. You can only get back what you put in 
So friends, that's the key here. That's what Paul is telling Timothy, right? You have to put in the work, right? Because then he says, think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in all things, right? So ultimately it comes to the Lord and him giving us understanding. He continues on, verse 8. Remember Christ Jesus raised from the dead, the descendant of David, that is my gospel, for which I suffer hardship. Once again, Paul's reminding us, hey, reminding Timothy, hey, I'm in jail, don't forget, right? Um, even to the point of being chained like a criminal, right? Paul's like, hey, stole chained, stole in jail, hanging out here, right? Chained to the wall. But the word of God, it continues on, is not chained, right? It's not attached, it's not tethered. Right? It can go anywhere. It's not being held down. The word of God goes across many faculties and many places, right? Matter of fact, it goes across all faculties and all places. Yes? I hope you agree with that. The word of God, God himself, is everywhere. Not just where we put him. Right? Not just in our sanctuaries on Sunday morning. But God is bigger than that. God is so much bigger than that. God is everywhere. He says, therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, so that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. And the saying is sure, if we have died with him, we will also live with him. So if we've died of ourselves, well, then we live with Christ. If we endure, we will also reign with him. Right? If we endure. So the, the word endure tells us that there's something, right, something that we're going to have to battle through, that we're going to have to struggle through. Right? You don't endure things that are easy. You only endure things that are rough. Right? As we're enduring this race, right? It's not easy to keep up each and every day, right? To make sure that we take those few minutes out of the day to, to read our plan. But we're enduring, right? We're in it for the long haul, at least for this month. We'll see what comes about next month. We'll get back to that um, shortly. Maybe not today, but we'll talk about that here in a bit. Um, Right. So, therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect. Right. And then verse 12. Sorry, that's where we were. If we endure, we will also reign with him. So, endure it, reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. Right. That's huge. If we deny Christ, Christ will deny us. I don't think that's a boat that any of us want to be in. If we are faithless... He remains faithful. See now, see how that change happened from between those two verses, right? Or the the end of that last verse and this verse, right? If you deny him, he will also deny us. So just saying that God isn't there, God turns his back, right? But if we are faithless, he remains faithful. So that means that he doesn't give up on us, even though he may deny us. He doesn't give up. On us he keeps pushing for us he keeps you know, he remains faithful even when we don't and it says for he cannot deny himself Wow God cannot deny himself we can deny him we can be unfaithful right but God cannot deny himself and then he goes on and says remind them of this and warn them before God that they are to avoid wrang uh, wrangling over words which does no good but only ruins those who are listening don't fight right don't fight with words just be peaceable, right? <laughs> is what it says. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him, a worker who has been who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth. And he tells them verse sixteen, avoid profane chatter, for it will lead people into more and more impiety, and their talk will spread like gangrene. There's a 
there's a lovely illustration for you, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so, um, avoid profane chatter, right? Let's not talk bad about people or things, right? It will lead them, it will lead them away from Christ, this impure chatter, right? As a matter of fact, that's one of the things that spreads so fast, right? We're talking about gossip, right? Gossip spreads way too fast. As a matter of fact, we can say it spreads like gangrene, right? Just like Paul tells us here. And then continuing on, verse 17, among them are Hyamanius and Philetus, who have swerved from the truth by claiming that the resurrection has already taken place. They are upsetting the faith of some. So Paul is calling people out by name. Right, in this letter to Timothy, he's like Timothy. Look, these people have missed the mark. They've said that the resurrection has already taken place. They are not to be listened to. Right, specifically by name, being called out by Paul. The God's firm foundation stands, bearing this inscription: "The Lord knows those who are His, and let everyone who calls on the name of the Lord turn away from wickedness." And then I love this next little illustration. We'll finish up with this in verse 20. Um, and in the verses following here. In a large house there are utensils, not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some are for special use, some for ordinary. All who cleanse themselves of things I have mentioned will become special utensils, dedicated and useful to the owner of the house, ready for every good work. Okay, so... <laughs> A, a little story I have to tell you. Um, I think everybody has their set of fine china, right? The plates that only come out at Christmas and Easter. Right? That's the only time we use them. They're not our good plates. They're not our everyday plates. Right? They're our, they're our good china. They're our special use plates, right? Well, this is kind of what Paul's talking about here with these utensils, right? These things that maybe you only use every once in a while, whenever maybe you have a special guest over, right? Or something of that means. Those things that are set apart for a special reason, right? Whenever we become uh, one with Christ, whenever we acknowledge Christ's presence in our life, we become a special utensil. We become that special holiday china, right, that we only use at, at Easter and Christmas or Thanksgiving or, you know, whatever, just on the holidays, whatever that may be, right? We become that. Something that's set apart. Right? Something that's different than the world. That whenever we come out, right, whenever we, whenever we show that we're the special china, people understand that we're different. Right? And that's our job. We have to show them that we are those special utensils or that special china. Right? We have to show the world that because we follow God, because we are one with God, that we are different. We can't be like everybody else. We can't be like the world. We have to be above the world. We have to be better than the world. That's who we're called to be as followers of Christ. And that's what we need to know is we keep running the race. Friends, it's been great. I've talked too long, 13 minutes and 50 seconds. I try to keep it at 10, but that's kind of hard to do. But I'll see you all tomorrow. Be blessed and have a great Monday.